Right. Um, hi, my name is Shane and I use she, her pronouns and this is the first session of our game of Monster Hearts 2, Tomb of Horrors. Uh, this game was organised through the Gauntlet Calendar, which is an online community that organises and plays a lot of mainly kind of indie tabletop get role-playing games with an emphasis on safety tools and, I guess, inclusivity. Um, if you'd like to find out more or get involved, you can check out gauntlet-rpg.com or at Gauntlet RPG on Twitter. Uh, we would love to have you come and play with us. And there's also the Gauntlet Community Open Gaming Weekend coming up at the end of February, which will be a great opportunity to try out some uh, fun games if you want to sort of dip your toe. Um, so I'll just get the players to introduce themselves. I'll go around uh, the order that you're on my screen. Um, just your, your name and the pronouns that you use, uh, anything else that you want to say about yourselves or where people can find you online. Uh, and I'd love to hear sort of whether you've played Monster Hearts before or, you know, what your experience is or whether you're familiar with it or what have you. Um, so can I start with Rai? Uh, sure. Rai, I use he, him pronouns. And um, I've only played Monster Hearts once before. We played kind of a Allison, or it was a, uh, oh shoot, Dorothy in the Yellow Brick Road sort of thing. Um, but I have played the Tomb of Horror several times, so I'm excited. Oh, wow, a real expert. That crossover. And my friend sent me this book for Christmas, which is the <laughs> old AD&D &D thing. Uh, he had it sit around his closet, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, Sam? Yeah, my name is Sam Zimmerman. I use he and him pronouns. If you want to follow me on Twitter for whatever reason, uh, you can do that at at a x x r o y, ax roy. Um, I also I have never played Monster Hearts. This is my first time playing Monster Hearts, and uh, Tomb of Horrors was my first RPG experience ever, and it was horrible, and it <laughs> collapsed, and we basically with the campaign died after about two sessions. But it got me into the hobby, and so I'm, I'm thankful for that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this. Awesome, uh, and Matthew. I, uh, I'm Matthew, I go by he and pronouns, and uh, I am a freelance uh, pundit, critic, and reviewer of video games. If you want to follow me uh, for hot video game takes and a bunch of politics stuff, uh, you can check me out on Twitter at, at Arcelia Matthew. Um, I have played Monster Hearts before, but it's been a long time. I don't even remember, like, it's gotta be like, is it five years, years. eight years? You no know, decades, maybe. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I have never played the Tomb of Horrors um, supplement for Monster Hearts. Uh, first time I've heard of it, but I did run the D Dungeons and Dragons Fourth Edition. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, <it's> horrible. <laughs> die. Dungeons and Dragons Fourth Edition version of Tomb of Horrors, which it was a very weird beast because it tried to have its cake and eat it too by softening itself and being more accessible to players, but still also being like super lethal. It was it was, it was a strange beast. And I just want to say, Raya, that book that you held up, the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player's Handbook, I found that in a thrift in a thrift bookstore for five dollars, like about four years ago, uh, just you know, just walking distance. So good find, good find, and. Um, I'm sure we can like uh, commiserate over it as a source of inspiration for this campaign. So, so yeah, many, so many rules. Oh my gosh! I mean, <laughs> look at the difference here. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just one book. <laughs> Um, well, I'm very happy to hear that so many, that basically you've all been traumatized by the Tomb of Horrors one way or another. Um, I've never played the actual Tomb of Horrors. I've, you know, heard its reputation. Um, I never got to play d d in the 80s, even though I really wanted to. Uh, my older cousin was really into it and I thought he was very cool. Obviously, I was quite mistaken. Um, but he would never let me play because I was his just annoying younger cousin. And this, this game today is basically my revenge for that. Um, so... Just quickly going through some admin things, I'm going to do a quick uh, CATS procedure. Um, so concept, um, I think you all know this, but Monster Hearts is a game about the messy emotional lives of teenage monsters. Um, this game in particular, obviously we've alluded to this, has this high concept um, that I need you to buy into, which in like my tagline is emotionally volatile monsters play D&D &D in the 80s. Um, so what I want you to imagine is a small suburban high school in the 80s. Um, I guess it's probably in America. Uh, I am 
in Australia. I don't really know outside of media what American high schools are like, but that's probably my main touchstone. Um, and there's a tiny little D&D club made, made up of a small group of nerds uh, and weirdos in this school. But the principal of this high school, uh, for whatever reason, has decided he needed to do something about the school's troublemakers. So he called them into his office one by one, told them they were going to fail, or maybe even going to be expelled, unless they took on, committed to, stuck, you know, really stuck to and, and stuck with an extracurricular activity. And he got his list out and he kind of went through and he went, ah, uh, you know, maybe football. Oh, no, football's full, actually. Ah, uh, let me see, you know, maybe the environment club. No, environment club is full. Ah, uh, well, look, it, it looks like the only extracurricular that isn't full up at this point is the, um, is it the, the Dungeons and Dragons Club? Uh, and so everyone will just have to be in the D&D club or they're going to fail. Um, and when we make characters, which we'll do in just a minute, um, I'm going to ask all of you to either play one of the existing members of the D&D club who is faced with this kind of incursion of uh, bullies and mean girls, uh, or conversely, one of the bullies or mean girls who is going to be forced to hang out with these weird nerds. Um, so that's the concept for the game. Um, aim is four sessions of three hours each, uh, taking breaks, you know, roughly on the hour. Um, today, probably mostly character creation and kind of world building stuff, but I expect to get to some, some actual play as well. Uh, and, you know, I think especially for a game like Monster Hearts, the, the character creation and world building stuff is often one of the most fun parts of the game. Um, tone wise, what I'm thinking aiming for not really sure how achievable it is is kind of half john hughes campy 80s teen melodrama uh half uh satanic panic horror movie uh whether that's achievable we'll see but that's the, that's my dream um subject matter and safety wise um monster hearts does include sex pretty explicitly in the rules um, each of the, the character sheets has a sex move. Uh, one of the basic moves is to turn someone on. Um, so just something to, to think about as you're filling in the lines and veils, which we'll do in just a sec. Um, there's a lot of content or sort of themes around teenage power and control. Um, I think it's worth flagging that stuff in advance. Um, so the safety tools that I'm planning on using are the X card, meaning if you're not comfortable with anything, you can say the words X card, you can mark an X in the chat, make an X sign um, on the screen. I would appreciate if anyone does make those visual Xs, just because I often won't be watching the stream when I'm running a game, just somebody else to verbalize that and let me know. Um, we also, like all Gauntlet games, be using the open door policy. So if you need to leave, you're welcome to just leave. It's not a drama. Um, and we'll also be using lines and veils. So. Does everyone have the link to the uh, Google Drive that I sent through? Yeah, I will restart um, it in some of the lines and bills, uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, just on the, the character keeper, there's a, a tab for lines and veils. Um, so yeah, I'm assuming that you've all played with lines and veils before, but uh, Briefly, a line is just a, a topic or a kind of content that won't come up in the game at all that we're just going to exclude. And a veil is a subject that may be included in the game, um, but won't be discussed in detail. We'll just kind of fade to black or, or skip over it. Uh, I'll just give you a minute here to, to add anything uh, that you would like to add to either the lines or veils uh, in the character keeper. Uh, and maybe just put an okay in the chat when you're uh, when you're done with that Sorry, I'll try not to slurp my coffee so close to the microphone. Um, so is everyone good with the list of lines and veils? Uh, 
Um, all right. So obviously also, um, if you think of something that you did, you know, if something comes up during the game that would have been a line or fail for you, you're, you're very welcome to add to that list um, any time during play. Um, so just to, to go over the list so we're all on the same page, we have lines on sexual violence, racial slurs, transphobia, fatphobia, violence against young children, and disease or pandemic. So those topics won't be included in the game. And we have veils on homophobia and torture. Um, that seems like a good list to me. Um, so I think it's time to make our characters. Uh, sorry, are there any, any questions about any of that sort of intro and admin stuff? All right. Um, well, let's make characters. So, um, yeah, so just hop on over to the character tab in the, the character keeper. Um, I think you've probably all done this before. Um, in the Google Drive, you'll find a PDF called Reference Sheets and Core Skins. Um, and the first page of that is just the, the basic moves. Um, and if you scroll down, you'll get to the Fey, which is the first of the, the skins that you can choose from. Um, so uh, maybe just, yeah, take a couple of minutes to, to have a read through, think about what skin you'd like to play, and then um, you know, tell us and we'll, you know, so like other PBTA games, um, two, only one player can have each skin. Um, but yeah, just let us know what you're interested in playing as. Uh, I've already taken a quick look through. I have ideas for either the Infernal or the Ghost. Cool. I thought we were all going to be troublemakers, so I started out with that idea. But now that you said we could also be nerds as part of the club, you're totally <laughs> blowing my mind. So I don't. Ah, uh, uh, there's so many good ones. Uh, I was going to go with a ghoul or the werewolf, um, mm -hmm. but now I'm thinking about like the queen would be really good. Mm -hmm. Like the GM for the D and D group would be really. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, well, that's good. So, so many good options. Oh. Now I'm kind of eyeing the mortal, the the, the mortal or the hollow. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the good thing is that it doesn't really sound like there's much overlap between the things that people are looking at. So you can all just pick which of the things that that appeal to you you want to play as. Well, with three players in this many playbooks, right? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to go with the Infernal then. Cool. I have some good ideas. Awesome. Um, so yeah, once you've once you've decided on a skin, um, feel free to start filling out. You know the the look and eyes and origin and the stats and whatnot. Yep, yep. It's it's the Hollow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, and Matthew, are you thinking of being one of the nerds or one of the the outcasts here? I think we're going with outcasts, yeah. Okay. Uh, and what about you, Sam? Um, I'm going to be the the awkward outcast. He doesn't want <laughs> to be here. <laughs> um, I get. I, I guess you know, no pressure, but not not. I guess now somebody needs to be super popular. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Shane, what would you prefer? Because uh, I think I could go either then with uh, the werewolf as like a third uh, person in detention here um, who's a troublemaker, or if you want someone to play one of the nerds, I could go with the queen or something like that. Uh, look, I, I'm really happy with whatever sounds most fun to you. It's it's not a problem sure. for me either way. Hmm. Uh, okay, let me think. It's been a long time since I looked at a game system as dark and sexy. <laughs> 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 it's all been sci-fi and you know Star Wars -y and all that stuff. And now, ooh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Monster Hearts really like tells you what it's all about <laughs> when the first move listed on the the basic move sheet has turned someone on. <laughs> yeah. Followed by shut someone down. Like the the, the the dynamic between those two moves is the whole game. The entire soundtrack of Buffy is already playing in my head. <laughs> <laughs> or even better, Angel. <laughs> hey, Rye. 
can you do me a favor? Uh, and are are there any like named demon lords in that book you have next to you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's the player's handbook here. I don't have. What a about a fair, actually? actually? That's the like the on brand one. And that is very on brand. Not there's no demon in the back, but let me see if there's like uh, what, what, what should I look for? Let's see if the Sarerac has like a. Uh, da, 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 da. Probably under wizard, huh? Um, I'll, I, I can start, I can look some more in a minute here. Let me try to think about this. Uh, I think I'm going to try to be brave and be the queen, but, um, it's a little right. out, outside of who I normally am. So it's going to be, a, a try. All right, I think I, I think I found, I think I found some here. We're, we're good. After you determine your, uh, your stats and your attributes spread, are there any other modifications or is that, that's, that's just it? Well, yeah, that's spread. just it. Uh, All right. right. And then just pick a couple of moves depending on what your playbook says. All right. Um, so I might just start getting you to introduce your characters while people are finishing up those last couple of details. Um, if everyone's happy with that. Um, so just going across the character keeper, um, Sam, can you just uh, tell us about Kane? Yeah. Um, so Kane is our infernal i'm still working on finding a good picture for him uh he uses he and him pronouns uh he is quiet he's a little bit kind of uh he's got jet black hair that's kind of greasy and slicked down to his face um he doesn't talk much he is always wearing clothes that seem to have feathers on them and nobody really understands why uh, it's it's just his thing, and he's kind of weird, and uh, that's 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 Kane. You don't you don't really talk about it. Um, um, can I ask, like, what's like a, a particular kind of feather, like raven feathers are, or chicken feathers, or they just are any... all crane feathers? Because crane feathers, okay. My my patron uh, Papa Zotzel is a uh, crane god, a crane demon. Uh huh. Um, and so, yes, he is, uh, he is, uh, beholden to this crane trickster God, um, who, uh, for those who are following Tomb of Annihilation lore, is one of the nine trickster gods that was, uh, enslaved by a Sararak in his quest for lichdom. Ah. So, kind of has a, a, a grudge against this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, mechanically, I took the moves, uh, I can't save myself, um, so when somebody else saves me from forces too powerful for me to reckon with, they get experience, and, uh, I get a string on them, um, and I also have some bargains that I've made with my, with Papa Zotzel, uh, and they can give me the ability to use any move from any skin one time. And uh, I can also ask them for anything and they will tell me how much it's going to cost. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, like it's fine if this is something that you want to kind of define during play or, or whatever, but like, do you know, like how is it that Kane came to make a bargain with a crane demon? Um, I'm kind of imagining it as like the uh, went off by himself one day into the woods and like was it like like just wanted to get away and kind of threw a tantrum and went off into the woods and found this abandoned shrine and happened to spend enough time in the shrine and awaken something that uh, wasn't supposed to be awakened. Yeah, cool. Um, in d and d world uh, i I think that since Kane is kind of quiet, he got a uh, last pick 
of characters in this campaign. And so he got stuck with the good cleric healer and he hates it. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, yeah, well, I guess we'll come back around to introducing the Monster Hearts characters, D&D &D characters at some point. Okay, um, yeah. That's, that's great. Um, cool. Um, uh, Matthew, do you want to introduce Iris? Yeah, so uh, I'm playing Iris the Hollow. Uh, I'm still working on all the kinks on that one, but my vision for her is that she is a, a, a sort of like, I guess a machine, like a like like a construct, uh, a fleshy construct, uh, designed for murder, and you know, and 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 since her, I I would imagine her backstory is that her makers, she doesn't have parents, she doesn't have anything like that, but her makers like maybe are lost or missing or you know put to the fire or whatever, and that sort of like meant that. Um, there is no programming to fall back on, and that's what sort of like um, leaves her in this sort of like uh, empty space uh, in in terms of like the way she thinks and processes the world. Um, and yeah, uh, that's what I got so far. Oh, so like, where does she live by herself, or what's her living situation if she doesn't have parents? Um, I would say that maybe she lives in a cabin in the woods um, where um, she used to, like, like it's sort of like a halfway space between when she would meet with her handlers. Mm, okay, cool. Okay, so we'll have to make sure there are some woods on the map of, uh, of this suburb. Cool. Yeah. Um, and Raya, so is it Doreen, Dorian? Yeah, I spelled that wrong. It's supposed to be Dorian. Dorian. Yeah. Dorian. There we go. Uh, Dorian uh, Meyer. Um, I'm going to be playing the queen. So I think he's kind of like uh, thinks that he's cool because he's like, uh, I don't know if the head of the D&D &D club, but like often knows all the rules and people look to him uh, to... Uh, make decisions and stuff. So we can kind of get into exactly that um, mm -hmm. positioning later on. But um, I think he is kind of, um, I think he comes from like a wealthy family, um, but his, uh, uh, somewhere along the way, he contracted some sort of infection that allows him to kind of bond people to him. Uh, and he's just figuring this stuff out. Um, but he comes from a wealthy family and he kind of has also kind of that shitty rich kid vibe thing going that was in a lot of eighties movies. So, um, I think he's just kind of, uh, he's kind of a jerk, um, sometimes, um, but people still kind of look to him in this world. So, uh, so just in terms of like contracted some sort of infection, we've got a line on, on disease and pandemic. Oh, right. So yes. you know, sticking like with... mag some sort yes. of like magical, uh, yeah, thing that's happened. Maybe. I was thinking like magical slash alien type of yeah. thing. But okay. Yes. Cool. Uh, let me change that. Let me look at how else there's maybe there's a better way to put that down there. Sure. Thank you. Um, yes. Thank you for noting that. Oh, that's cool. Um, all right. Great. So the next part of character creation is to is the part of the the playbook uh, called your backstory. Um, so you all see there are two prompts there. Um, where you give out strings to, well, either to yourself or to one of the other the characters. Um, strings basically representing some sort of emotional power you have over someone um, that you can spend for, for in-game benefits. Um, so I'll just get, just go in character keeper order again and just get you to read out the first of those two prompts uh, and then we'll go through each of you uh, twice. So just do one prompt and then let the next person uh, go. Um, Sam, do you want to start with Kane's first? Backstory prompt. Yeah, I mean, my first backstory prompt is pretty, pretty simple. I owe debts. Give away, <laughs> give away three strings divided any way you want. Uh -huh. uh, and I also get to include my dark power as uh -huh. one of the, the options. And so I think I'm going to give one to each. Okay. 
Um, do you have a sense of what uh, either Iris or Dorian did, or like what what in particular that represents, or is that something we'll play to find out? Um, it might just represent my guilt, maybe, mm -hmm. and like I don't say no to people because that's hard. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. Uh. And what's Iris's backstory prompt? Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, I, I forgot what's next. Uh, my next, my backstory prompt, Iris's backstory prompt is: you've been taking your social cues from someone, and doing so has taught you a lot about them. So gain two strings on them, and I think I would. It makes sense that Dorian, uh, Dorian is the most to, to learn from, given how uh, reserved and reticent uh, Kane is. Yeah, I think you've. I mean, you've really drawn the short straw in terms of who you would like to to, to emulate as, as you learn to be human. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, so two strings uh, on on Dorian. Where do I mark that? Um, so there's a string section just at the bottom of the um, right. character table. You scroll down. So you don't need to keep track of who has strings on you. Um, just who you have strings on. Got it. All right, Dorian, two. Uh -huh. You uh, also have one on me. I have one on... You have one on me from my thing. Okay, okay. Oh. It's always confused me in the Monster Hearts, the whole on and off, and the, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, does Do has Dorian noticed? Uh, I guess that's a question to, to both Iris and Dorian. Um, I don't think so. Or if Dorian has noticed, uh, he just like, yeah, that's, he takes it for kind of for granted. Yeah, I like, I like <laughs> that. I like, yeah, go ahead. I like the idea that, that Dorian is like too self-absorbed in, in his own shit to, to really, for it to register. Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> there, but it's like he hasn't thought about it at all. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Anyone can see, just not you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there, there. Okay. Uh, and Dorian, what's your? Um, so my back first backstory is actually someone. Uh, oh wait, that's the wrong one. Ah, uh, where'd it go? I lost my spot. Uh, name three side characters who are members of your gang. Gain a string on each. Uh, so I guess some of these folks can make up the other D and D players. So the first two people I ever played D&D &D with were both named Jesse. So I'm naming one of them Jesse. Uh, and then I'm going to put a Michael. And I still got to think of one more name. OK. <laughs> um, maybe a Jennifer. I'll do a Jennifer. Cool. Uh, great. And do you want to do your second one? And then we'll go back across the character keeper. Sure. Um, my second one is you find someone threatening, give them a string on you and take a string on them. Uh, I think that's probably Kane. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe that. Uh, as somebody who is uh, a very social person, uh, having somebody else just be kind of the shutdown force would probably be pretty threatening. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we each we each have a string on each other. That's how. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think also that maybe there's a little bit of you got this like weird weird dark thing going on, and um, I changed the 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 my origin to the firstborn of the hive mind. So um, I think I'm looking out for other sources of power and wary of them. Yeah. Right. How exciting! First one of the hive mind is an amazing uh, <laughs> origin. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, and uh, Iris, let's do your second one. Oh, that's right. Uh, my next one is someone's blah, 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 someone's seen through your invented past and realized it's all lies. They gain two strings on you, and I nominate Kane for that one because I think you know he's. Um, um, he sees someone keeping up, keeping a lie, or he sees someone who whose truths are inconsistent. Like that's something that's easy for him to recognize. And yeah, there you go. 
That makes sense. I mean, Kane also like has some connection to the woods, so it, it might make sense that he also has come across your your cabin or, or something like that. Yeah, the, um, like that. Um, the other thing that I could do there there is a bargain that I didn't take. Um, that is uncan. I can basically listen. the The dark power will tell tell me things about people and whisper secrets in my ears. Uh, so I could swap. I really like strings attached. So let's swap out uh, Elsewise power for that. And so maybe maybe it's just like a like I can like. Um, uh, Papa Zotzel has told me about you somehow. Mm -hmm. um, how does Papa Zotzel speak to you? Like, normally? Do you have to visit the shrine, or does he speak, I think you know, speak to your, speak I, I was speak to I you? I was picturing the shrine, but I think this is more of like the just... That's it. If, if I'm if I'm swapping it over to this, I think it's just like this constant buzzing in the back of my head that I have to like actively ignore. But sometimes it just gets loud and overpowering and just like pokes itself in and makes itself heard. Oh, <laughs> all right, sounds good. Uh, and what's your last uh, second backstory thing? Yeah, uh, I have to scroll back to the sheet. Um, my second backstory is someone thinks they can save you, gain a string on them. Mm. Um, do we want to have this be um, an NPC? Because I already have strings on everybody. Um, we could start making some weird NPC webs. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean, I, I guess what you feel. Does anyone feel like their character would be trying to save Kane? Uh, I, I guess I wonder if um, Dorian might see recruiting someone to the hive mind as, as a form of salvation. That's what I was kind of thinking, too. It's not really like saving him for himself, but saving <laughs> him for me because <laughs> I can use... Can saving say? in the sense of preserving for use. Yes. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah, so take another string on me, I guess. Thanks, Matt. Um, cool. So the next thing I want to do is um, just start sort of filling out the setting a bit more. Um, so I have this uh, process that I stole from Rich Rogers' game, uh, Hit the Streets, Defend the Block. Um, so I would love for you to open up the uh, Google slide that's in the drive that I sent you, the one called Springwood, and you'll see just a, a straight blank page there. Um, uh, has everyone got that? Cool. So I'm going to just go through different prompts to kind of fill this out and turn it into a map of our town. Um, so the first thing is that we're all just going to put a street onto it. Uh, one at a time. So I'm going to start, um, just to give you an example, uh, I'm going to put a street right across here. Uh, going to give it a name. I think it's called Main Street. Uh, and then, so again, just going kind of in character keeper order. So Kane, I'll get you to go first. Um, just put a street anywhere you like on the map, but I, I want all the streets to intersect at least one of the other streets that's already on there. So, sorry, Kane, for you, that's limited no, options. Yeah. Um, uh, let's do another kind of... Um, welcome to make your streets. Yeah, short, long, curvy, however you want. Hey, nice. And this is an American town. And so we need to have a Broadway. Cool. Uh, Matthew, can you put us straight in?
And what's the straight called? Oh. <laughs> Lynchian drive. Amazing. Um, uh, and Rai, do you want to throw on a, another straight for us? Cool. Okay, so the the idea here is this just gives us some some kind of landmarks and ideas about you know how the towns are arranged. The intention is not that this is like every street in town. You know, there's lots of streets that we're not going to represent here and stuff like that. Um, but the next thing that I want us to do, uh, and again, we'll just go through in character keeper order. Sorry, Sam, that, that means I keep picking on you first. I'll, I'll make somebody else do it at some point. Um, but the next thing is just to go through and get you each to put an important location somewhere on the map. Um, so if you look at the second slide, I've got a list of suggestions for, or kind of prompts for ideas for what important locations might be. Um, but you're also very welcome to just add any, you know, location that you think would be fun as a player, um, or that you think is important to your character. Um, we'll, we'll chuck the woods on at the end, so you don't need to use um, use your your turn for that if you uh, rather put something else on the map. Um, but yeah, Sam, can I get you to? lead off with an important location in Springwood. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. We should probably put the school on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, where, where do you think the school is? I think, I think the school is not like in a, in a central location. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of off maybe like here. Do we have a name for this town? So I'm calling it Springwood. Okay. Uh, if anybody has a, a better name, they are they are welcome to throw it in. Um, like Springwood is the name of the town from Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, that's where I stole it from. Oh. Just trying to get the text right. Uh, all right, Springwood High, beautiful. Um, Matthew, do you want to throw in an important location somewhere? Yeah, I want to put the bar that <clears throat> the bar that doesn't check IDs. Too <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, I think presumably not too close to the high school itself. Yeah, I think it would be closer uh, along Broadway. So I'd say maybe. Um. Let's see. Kind of somewhere here. Am I doing it right? Oh God! <laughs> uh, yep, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna start. Uh, sorry, I'm just gonna start trying to share my screen. Um, just so if anyone does end up watching this on YouTube, they can actually see what we're talking about. That's um, true. <laughs> I have no idea if that worked, but hopefully, uh, anyone watching can see the map now. McGinty's. I, I don't Amazing. think that worked. Oh, it didn't? No, I okay. don't. Chrome has lost permission to capture your screen. All right. Sorry, sorry for the massive YouTube audience. Uh, I'll try I'll try and put it in there. <laughs> what in did the we say? <laughs> yeah, never mind. All right. Uh, and Rai, do you want to put in an important location? Well, my bar got stolen, so... Uh, <laughs> But that's all right. I like I like McGinty's here. Um, I'm gonna put in the Rim Rocks uh, here. I gotta figure out a shape. And this is like some bluffs that overlook town. Uh, mm. And this is a combination of <clears throat> the place where uh, people hang out, as well as where pe teenagers go to make out. So right. <clears throat> um, figure out a line here for this. Sure. Nah. Um, 
I wouldn't mind filling out the map a little more. Would people be okay if we go through one more time and get another set of important locations? Cool. All right. Um, Sam, what, what's next from you then? I'm going to add uh, this shape. which is the old, the old refinery. And that is where I found the body last week. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, there we go. I was waiting for it to get all gothic. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, I'll definitely come back and ask you some more about the body that you found. But um, Matthew, what's your next important location? Uh, something important that burned down recently. I would say uh, a nunnery or a convent. I, I don't really know what these institutions Basically, a place with, with nuns or a sister. Mm -hmm. And I want to call it like the Sisters of the Quiet Way. Like okay. that, place, yeah, that place burned down. It is no more. But, you know, it used to be something. Yeah, right. Yeah, let's get scary. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, I should mark that, shouldn't I? Let's see. Where yeah. will you put it? Uh, do, 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 do. Hmm. It doesn't make sense for it to be on Main Street. It makes more sense to be away from the sins of mortal, of, 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 yeah. of, of the common folk. So, yeah. Is this a Catholic high school and it's next to the school? Oh. Hmm. I, I, either way, I mean, you know, I, you know, I think anyone. Well, up to you guys. How do I? How do I text? Yeah, there just a little tool with a T in it. Yeah. yeah. I think the school should be separate from the sisters since it just burned down. So like, I'm not sure if anybody wants to like, let's say it burned down a while ago or does that, does that, does that make sense in the milieu? Sure. Like how, how long ago do you think the, the fire was? At least like one generation. Night? Oh, okay. One generation, like 20 years ago. Right, right. Um, yeah. And is it still just kind of a, a ruin there or has it been rebuilt or what's the... Let's just say when we start the the campaign, it's being rebuilt. <laughs> mm. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Shane's going to magic something that are, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> yeah, right. Um, I love it. Um, okay, and Rai, what what else do you want to put on the map? I'm going to do the Skyline Drive-In, which is hey. an outdoor drive-in movie theater. Excellent. Excuse me, I was just making a happy face to my partner. <laughs> Who can hear me if I'm saying everything. <laughs> All right. So I think I'm just going to put in a, a little arrow pointing off to kind of the southeast, um, which is where I imagine the woods are, just so that we have a sense of where the, the woods are. I was thinking that they would be right on, like right behind Main Street. Because I know that's a, oh, okay. there are some towns where like, there's like a single row of shops and then it's just forest. Yeah, right. right. Well, do you want to mark that in? I guess it, it does make sense to me that it would be like a, right by the drive-in as well. And I think the drive-in can be like a little ways out of town down that road too, down yeah. the street. Yeah. So, I, I mean, none of this is meant to be in, you know, to scale or anything like that. Um, cool. So the last thing is, and you can all just do this at the same time, like you don't need to take turns, I guess. Just put down um, where your house is, where, where your character lives. Um, I guess we know that Iris is in the woods somewhere, but uh, those of you who, who have more, more regular residences.
Um, all right. So we have uh, characters and we have the town of Springwood. Um, is there anything else that anyone like particularly wants to have on the map that we haven't included? Um, like we can add other stuff that comes up during play. There's definitely other important places in town that might not be on the map yet. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know something bad's gonna ha gonna end up happening if you live in a nice quiet suburb on Lynchian Drive. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, look, it's probably a good time for our first break. Do you wanna come back at ten minutes past the hour? Um, all right. Cool. Well, I'll see you then. I have. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. Just making sure that it was coming in. Because I don't have a little bar. Anyway, uh, I have decided that the name of the bar should instead be Club Silencio. <laughs> <laughs> Silencio. Where all the children, where all the teenagers sneak in to see creepy experimental art. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't even think about that, but yes. <laughs> Cool. Um, is everyone feeling good to keep up? Yeah. Cool. All right. So, like, that's pretty much all the, the setup and world building stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, I'm still going to be kind of asking you a lot of questions as we go, but also, I guess, ready to start some role playing. Um, so, what I'm imagining is that the D&D club meets on a Saturday morning. Uh, just to really get my breakfast club fantasy in there. Um, probably, you know, in maybe in a room in off the library or a portable or something like that at the school. Um, I guess, Dorian, you said that you're you're kind of the leader of the D&D club, so you probably have some keys or, you know, special permission to, to access the school to do that. Um, are you normally the DM or is one of the other D&D players running the game? So I thought about this a little bit while we took a mm -hmm. break, and I think Dorian is too. Um, I'm too selfish to be the GM. It's like too much mm -hmm. work. So <laughs> I have pawned that off on Michael. So Michael's the DM. Okay. Actually, yeah. Let's make Jen. Uh, let's make. Let's make Jennifer the DM. Jennifer is the yeah. DM. Okay. And I think uh, that's because uh, that way I can kind of like lean on the DM to make sure that like my character get what's it wants. There's always good scenes for me. And <laughs> uh, yeah, I always have fun. Yeah. <laughs> my, my head canon is that he, that um, Dorian has GM before, but he was like, you know what? This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Too much responsibility. <laughs> yeah. And who wants to read all the rules? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just one and done. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> So how is so how is your gang feeling about these new uh you know outsiders being kind of forced to join the the D&D &D club like is, is it exciting that some new people are going to be joining is it threatening I, I mean you don't like Kane in particular but what's the vibe of the group I think that um I've made sure the vibe of the group is not excited about it like we've i've been like doing a lot of smack talking or um <laughs> just in general like like what's what's the principal's name again oh uh, we didn't establish that do you want to give him a name oh no i don't want to give him a name but um uh, like schneider maybe mr schneider. schneider yeah mr schneider um i'm just like griping like uh why does mr schneider have to go and stick his nose into everything like all I really wanted was a place that we could hang out where we got the keys, we can hang out here and do our thing. Like, and I think some days we don't even play that much Dean. Well, you know, we probably do like get some in, but a lot of times it's just like us hanging out too. Yeah. So now these people are coming and now we're going to have to like, actually like really play D and D and stuff probably <laughs> more than we were. Fair enough. Cool. Um, all right. 
So, does like so Jennifer probably arrives first, right? Like she gets there, she opens up, she sets up the space. Yeah, and then the other members of the D and D club start to to filter in. Um, Kane, I I have to ask you about the body that you found recently. What like what what happened? What were the circumstances? I want to say this was a like um I got I got bidden to go to the refinery and deal with something and I wasn't told what it was going to be. All right. And so I got there and there's just this this body and like the the voice is telling me like dump it in the pit and there's there's like this pit of uh like old like it's basically just like a filled in basically mud pit with a tarp over the top and so it it's like somebody else did this but i'm the like the my my patron has brought me in as like the cleanup crew and All right. I, I have to somehow deal with that. So does that does that mean that Papa Zottle has another another kind of minion in the town of Springwood? I, I apparently, oh, or he did this himself. Yeah, right. Um, and, and how had like could you tell how the body had been killed? Like what what sort of condition was it in? Uh, strangled. Strangled. And did you recognize them? Like, do you know who it was? Nope, no idea who this is. Clearly from out of town. Like like this is like an out of towner. Yeah. You could tell that from their clothes or, or just because you didn't recognize I think them? I think it's because this is a small enough town that I would yeah. I would have at least sure. recognized them a little bit. Okay. Um how exciting. And my yeah. other question, which I'm also gonna ask Iris in just a sec, is uh like what specifically did you do to get in enough trouble that you're being forced to play D D? Um, I, Kane's issue is probably like the delinquency type, uh, just like not showing up, not completing assignments. Uh, I don't know that there's necessarily any like, uh, like I, I bur like I broke into the school and stole something. No, I, I, th I think this is more of just like the repeated truancies, the, the never turning in assignments, the just it's hurdle. Yeah repeated pattern of disinterest okay cool um and iris same question for you yeah um yeah so i think what iris did to do to, to, to earn this is um so she's only she's only at school because she's trying to figure out like her place in the world and i'd say that there's a tendency for her to fall back to like programming and defense like defensive uh, things uh, by trigger, so maybe she injured a classmate uh, when she when when her body perceived something as a threat, and she acted out in a way that was, you know, of course excessive. So you know, like no, we don't tolerate violence at the school. So uh -huh. you know, you you threw that child in the locker, blah blah blah, kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, or okay. you know, maybe they fell off the second the second story. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> yeah, you know, it's quite, cool, a, yeah. quite a spectrum there. From you shoved them into the locker to you shoved them out the second story window. I was processing it in my mind. I had to go back to I had to go back to my own uh, high school years and think about what what would be what would be a terrible thing to do. <laughs> so, so yeah, maybe they they fell down, and you know they're in a cast in a wheelchair or whatever, or a crutches or whatever, you know. So yeah. Yeah, right. So badly hurt. And uh, like, how did people perceive you after that? Like, was that kind of consistent? Like, have you often had these little scrapes and incidents that maybe that was a more dramatic example? Or was that very out of character? I would say that was uh, definitely uh, out of character. I think, okay, so how I'm going to perceive Iris right now is that I think when she first started going to the school, like, it was, it, it seemed easy, it seemed natural. And um, but as the as the weeks go by, it seems actually harder, and so now her like her sort of like 
you know, murder death skills are just like coming out stronger than they were in the first week, which is really strange. Interesting. Yeah. It's almost like the first week of keeping up the charade is easier than it is on the eighth week. <laughs> <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah. Is yeah. that because she's starting to like care about other people, or like the the maybe the emotions uh, are getting involved and harder to manage? I'll try to figure that out. But right now, where I'm going with is maybe the latent programming. Like it needs to act out. It needs right. to act out. Yeah, right. And right. And if he doesn't, if she doesn't, then you know it's just gonna okay. randomly pick a moment to express itself. All right, I love that. I I, yeah. I just feel your darkest self ready to to burst through. Um, <laughs> cool. So, um, the next thing I might just get you to all take a turn to talk about, like, so D and D Club is going to be Saturday morning. You're all going to go. Um, I just want to hear about, like, you know, your your morning getting ready. Like, what does your bedroom look like? You know, what is your you know? Do you interact with your parents or family at home? How do you get to school? Like, just that kind of, like, you know, character stuff. Um, especially, always love to hear what people imagine their characters' bedrooms look like. Especially in D&D, &D, but also in Monster Hearts. Um, so, let's start with Dorian, because I imagine the D&D, &D, like, the OG D&D &D club members getting to school before the newcomers, or getting to the club first. Um, so, yeah, tell us about your, your morning. So, I think Dorian's bedroom is... Uh, I think he's just got like black sheets on a bed and then there's like a lot of kind of metal posters up on the wall. Um, but I think he gets up, uh, goes downstairs, uh, his parents aren't around like Saturday morning. They just kind of like, I think maybe his mom's kind of like into some new age stuff. So she's like doing some like meditation in a different room or something. But they have kind of like the one modernish house in the suburb, um, and I think his dad is maybe like a banker or something. Um, but his dad is is not around a lot. He's like traveling, so I think Dorian just goes down, uh, puts some pop tarts in the toaster, um, and then is it like too much to say that he has like a like a motorcycle? I was thinking he's like a, maybe a senior at this point. So maybe he has a driver's license and kind of has like a cool motorcycle, but maybe it's more like a, I don't know, a Vespa or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, if, he, if he's got rich parents, then it, it yeah. seems plausible to me that he has a motorbike. I think he has a motorbike. So I think he like guns that up in the driveway. Uh, and then he's the last one to right. the D and D group. He's like late. Which always makes Jennifer mad because she spends time like prepping the adventure and getting ready, and then like he gets there and they barely like play that much and yeah. So okay, um, so can I ask? You said that he has a lot of metal posters on the wall. Are we talking like actually cool metal bands, or are we talking like poser hair metal, like '80s stuff, or oh. even is it striper? Is it Bible metal? Uh, oh, uh, I, you know, I'm not, I, I was, I don't know, like, <laughs> is Slayer the right thing to say here? I think. Slayer is like the, I, I'm not an expert on 80s yeah. metal, but I think Slayer is the cool answer. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like Slayer stuff. Like, I'll look okay. up, I'll look up some links for like metal band posters and I'll throw them in the chat. All right. I, I won't even be disappointed if metal fans criticize us in the stream or the YouTube. <laughs> yeah, like I listened to metal a little bit, but it was I only dabbled, so I don't feel like an expert on this. So. Yeah, uh, I'm not an expert on any like any relevant subculture from the '80s, including D and D. So I definitely I hope to get some some angry complaints about how I'm like the, oh, yeah. that's not how Fireball worked in Second Edition. I just yeah. want to say, uh, I don't think any, I'm pretty sure your metal credentials have been revoked because no metal <laughs> fan would use the word dabble to describe their relationship. <laughs> of all words. <laughs> cool. Um, so, Kane and Iris, which of you do you think would arrive first at uh, a D&D &D club? I was going to offer that, honestly, I think Kane would be there like waiting outside the door. Oh, okay. 
Cool. Well, let's hear about your morning then. What does Kane's bedroom look like? So I think, so Kane's bedroom is a, a trash pit. Uh, it is uh, it, the, the old saying, it looked like a tornado blew through here. That's Kane's bedroom. Uh, it's an absolute pigsty. He gets up out of a, a bed where the fitted sheet isn't even like actually on the bed. It's just kind of curled up in a ball in the middle. Uh, gets up, pulls some clothes out of what looks like a pile of laundry that you can't tell if it's clean or dirty. Um, and I think he just climbs out the window. Right. You can hear his parents like getting up in the other room and he just doesn't want to deal with them. And so he climbs out the window. It's like the crack of dawn. He just does not want to be in this house. Right. And, I think he gets, he climbs out the window. He like walks over to a bush and pulls a pack, like pulls a pack of cigarettes out from behind the bush, uh -huh. uh, lights a cigarette and just starts walking to school. And so oh. uh, he is waiting outside the door when Jennifer gets there and puts out the cigarette on the, the sidewalk and follows her in because he has nowhere better to be. Okay. And like, just in, in terms of the, the house, like what, what do we see about the house? Like Dorian's family is quite rich. Is this like a, a fancy house, middle class, working class? Like what do we see? I don't, I, I think this is pretty like lower class ish, lower middle class. I don't think he's like, desperate for money poor but i think like his mom works at a grocery store and uh maybe maybe his dad's out of work and is looking for work type deal cool all right um and uh iris tell us about your morning <laughs> yeah so um iris uh like you said established lives in a cabin in the woods and so her morning would uh, would consist of, you know, getting up and sort of like, um, she's got like a, a pot in the, you know, uh, sorry, a pot, or a, yeah, a pot in the middle of a fire, you know, and that's where she eats some kind of like really low quality, like, you know, just like porridge or whatever, uh, in the morning. And it's from there that she, it's from there that she gets dressed and walks the whole way to school. And she just sort of like does it in, kind of in a in a daze and um arrives i'd like to say exactly the same time as kane does so we're sort of like mutually you know we're mutually early and you know uh kept waiting by dorian okay well okay so kane and iris you both arrive like at, at the spot um like maybe 15 minutes before the appointed time does that sound about right um you, I mean, presume you recognize each other, like you know each other from school. Do you talk to each other or does awkward silence pass? Like what's that scene going to look like? Are we thinking this is like first day or has this? Yeah. So I'm thinking this is your first time at Dandy okay. Club for both of you. Uh, no. Yeah. If, yeah, if, if there's going to be a conversation, Kane is not starting. <laughs> I think, uh, yes, it's definitely silence, but you know, just so not to keep it, just so it's not boring necessarily. Yeah. I would say that Iris sort of just like um, stares sullenly at at Kane, sort of like like there's a big question mark behind the eyes, but it's not really saying anything because you know she's also like, well, whatever, <laughs> I don't care, <laughs> you know. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, I think Kane is just like. Le like it looks like he's just like ignoring you um and i think it's because he is actively trying to drown out this voice that is getting louder in the back of his head but you can't tell is there a specific thing that the voice is saying at this point um is this where because we've already kind of established that um i know something about iris and who they are is this when that's happened is this when that happens 
Um, I, I mean, it can be. Is that what you're thinking? I'm, I'm asking like, Matthew. Oh well, you know when you when you appear distracted by the voice, I would say that's see just why a PBTA we don't have to do perception or insight rolls. We just <laughs> um, uh, no. Um, I go like you know, like Iris goes like, "What's your problem?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like clearly, like is not a great, is not a great place to be at. But it's when you start, you know, when you start looking even more mildly inconvenienced by the situation. Yeah, like, I think I think you say that, and I like kind of shake my head a little bit and look up at you, um, and that breaks my concentration enough. Um, what does the darkness tell me about you? That is enough to 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 give me these strings over you. Uh, you are muted. Sorry, is this a move? I'm a little confused. Or uh, no, I'm I'm going back to the 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 kind of the setup question that you had. That was, uh, what was it? Uh, da, 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 da. someone seen through your invented past and realized it's all lies. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of saying that this is the moment that that happens. Uh, I'd say. You've rolled that natural 20 on your first perception check. Yeah. So, no, so, so I think it has something to do with the voice. I think the voice sort of like um, gives you an insight into Iris telling you that, um, that, sh that she's got, <clears throat> that she's, that she's got darker, uh, sort of like, darker truths or, or equally as dark truths as you and that nothing is as it seems with, 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 with Iris. Yeah. And I think that you, like, I look up at you at when you, when you like try and engage with me and you can just see one of my, my eyes, my hair is covering my other eye, but it is like burning violet. Whoa. With that and, then I, I, and then I blink and it goes away and I like look down kind of ashamed. Yeah. I would say with that burning violet, you know, um, the voice in your head, a lot, oh, tell me if I'm overstepping my bounds here. The voice in your head is like, uh, is, is much more explicit about it by saying, you know, um, that it, it, it taunts you saying like it knows, it knows more about me. But it's not like interested that. in yeah. But it's not interested in telling you. It yeah, wants you to like find that. out. Good. <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah, boy, figure it out on your own. It's like the dark, the dark voice is saying, "Oh, don't want to listen to me." Well, I'll <laughs> yeah. Now my brain says your voice sounds like Hades from from the video game Hades. <laughs> <laughs> boy. Um. <laughs> Oh, that's so Sam, do, do you do anything with this information? Do you say anything back to Iris? Um, I think I think it's just like the 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 kind of the. I don't have a problem, and I s snuff out the um, the cigarette and just kind of sit back and be sullen and angsty about it. Um, do you think you're trying to shut Iris down? Because one of our basic moves is to shut someone down. Yeah, let's go for that. Uh, I, need, right. I need a rolling room. I didn't click yeah. that. Sorry, uh, I think that was in the email, or how about, do I need to send you one now? Uh, I do think the sorry actual roll with me link. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll just put it in the chat. Give me one sec. Yeah. Uh, and shut someone down is with cold, which is a yeah. minus one. Uh, 
Well, I rolled oh, an nice. 11, so I got a 10. All right. So um, on a 10 up, choose one from below. What do you want? Do you have the, the root moose reference? Yeah, I do. Um, I think they gain a condition. What condition are you thinking? Um, there are there there, no, there so are like specific. Can, okay, no, so am I about to gain a condition? Sorry. Uh, I think I think it's like grumpy or angry. So Something. conditions in Monster Hearts are more like how other people see you rather than being a kind of internal emotional state. Okay. Um, um, I think I, 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 I think that can also kind of fit there as like people see you as being like frustrated or like angsty maybe is a better mm -hmm. word. Yeah, I mean, th throwing someone off the second story is pretty angsty. <laughs> um, cool. Do you want to just mark that you have the condition angsty, uh, Iris? And so, right. if, if that's what you are happy with, the um, so just for for the other players or for all of you really, any time that you're rolling a move against one of the other players, if you can incorporate or an NPC, if you can incorporate their condition into the way that you're the, the action that you're performing in some way, then you can add one to the roll. Um, so just something to bear in mind. Um, yes. When I gain a condition, so I got the condition angsty from, 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 from Kane, right? Yes. Mark experience. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, and welcome. how does Iris react? Like you've been pretty decisively shut down there. Oh God, yeah, that's. Uh. <laughs> Hmm. Last time that happened, I think you threw someone out a window. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really tempted to lash out physically. I'm you know I'm still getting a <laughs> feel for this system to be honest. But hmm. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> they can hear you. <laughs> you can do it. Okay, okay. Uh, my partners are cheering me on to. Lash out physically. Be a hot mess. You can do it. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> Hi, Jamie. Okay. Um, so what does that look like? What do you uh, actually do? I think what she does is, so, so, so Kane's sort of like, he's been on bended knee while gazing, you know, up and like sort of burning by the eye. And then that's when he like takes it away and then just sort of like shuts Iris down. And I think, when that happens, um, Iris sort of like just reflectively, uh, like grabs his shoulder and sort of tries to throw him to so he spins around and on his heels. And I guess that is lash out physically. Well, yeah. So we'll see how <laughs> successful you are. So I think roll with volatile. I think is that right? Yeah, roll with volatile. My volatile is at a negative one. Yeah. Am I rolling or are we, are we using a dice roller? Or? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I just put the link in the in the chat if you want to check it. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Sorry about that. There we go. Right. I see it. Uh, and this is 2d6. Yeah. And create a roll. Mm -hmm. 2d6, add another 9, 2d6, modifier, negative 1. Um, all right, let's roll. It is a... Oh. <laughs> 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 Yay! Um, hey, mark experience. We, uh, <laughs> so it is a game where you mark experience on a miss. Yeah. Um, I'm happy. I rarely get an experience in PBTA. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I think that as you like, like lunge in to shove Kane, um, you feel like this hit, this hand, like landing on your shoulder, uh, and both of you realize that Jennifer's just arrived and she's just, just in time to kind of separate you to, to make sure this doesn't happen, but she's quite diplomatic about it. You know, she's 
I mean, I, I imagine Jennifer to be a bit of a peacemaker. Like, she's stepped in to DM this group because nobody else really wanted to. She's a people pleaser. So she very gently, like, doesn't draw attention to the fact that you're about to get into a punch-on and that she's had to separate you. She just, like, puts what, what feels like a friendly hand on your shoulder and she's like, great, our newest member's here, bright and early, Happy to see you getting along so well. Um, just love that energy. But let's save it for the save it for the table, um, and sort of steps steps between the two of you. Confirms that there's not actually going to be an act of violence right now, uh, and then pushes on between you and opens up the door to the room that you're you're going to be playing in. Um, so do I take a condition or no? No. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, not at this point. So, Dorian, you're eventually uh, on your way to D and D club, um, missing all the drama so far. Well, I I took the uh, move uh, streaming, so I have a telepathic connection with my gang members, and I can always hear their emotions and fears. And so, usually, I kind of wait until jennifer i can feel the frustration level like i'll even like park, park around the block sometime <laughs> just to wait to make sure that like she really wants it before i go in there and i think that uh today i've even like made a pit stop to like pick up some cigarettes and uh, i think i usually bring snacks and mm -hmm. uh sometimes other things illicit things to dnd club uh, but yeah, I, I, f I feel that this morning is a little different in her emotions after walking through this conflict. So I think I'm like, I, I get to it, getting over there okay. and see what this is going on. So as you like leave the little corner store where you collect your snacks or, or what have you, you notice a flyer on a telephone pole just outside the store for the uh, Holy Fire Evangelical Bible Study Group, which you, you haven't really noticed around town before. Um, what is the, what is it about this flyer that like catches your attention? What was the name of the group again? Holy, Holy Fire. The Holy Fire Evangelical Bible Study Group. I think it's like, uh, there's a picture of of the preacher, like just standing in the, fl like the flames are like around them. And um, like, there's no Photoshop in this point in the eighties, I think, but it looks yeah. really real. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, that's kind of a cool fucking picture. So I just rip it off and like, take it with me. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Like it's going to look good next to my Megadeth poster on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to see that you googled some metal bands uh, while you had a, had a moment there. Um, so you pull up not long after that um, to D&D Club. I think you're probably still the last to arrive. So Jesse and Michael have arrived um, in your absence. Um, uh, Kane and Iris, like... Is there still like tension between you inside, like, or have you like settled down? Like, where, where are we? Where are you two at? I think Kane is probably doing the really annoying thing where. Um, he basically sat down at the table and then immediately just leaned all the way back in the chair like he's about to fall over and put his feet on the table while <laughs> Jennifer is trying to, like, put the board out and everything. Uh-huh. But, but the two of you aren't about... To, like, you're not right now about to get into a fist fight or anything like that. You've, no, I just... I, like, you've been de-escalated. I, I like that, like... So Kane, like, sort of just walks over there, does this chair slump and the... Thing. Well, I used to do that a lot too when I was a kid, uh, and then <laughs> just um, uh, Iris just sort of like tries to keep as much distance between her and mm -hmm. Kane as he just sort of like uh, clods over to the far side of the classroom 
where the window would be, you know, and then sit there and just sort of like her chin under her, her hand, just stare out the window. Oh. Like wanting to be anywhere but here, basically. <laughs> Real social bunch of folks. <laughs> so Jennifer will like you know, try and include you both into the action by getting uh, Jesse and Michael to kind of help, like each of them to help one of you make a character. Um, Sam, you already suggested that you would be kind of, <laughs> they would just press gang you into being the group's cleric. Um, uh, Iris, what sort of character do you think that you end up being? And can I just like preface this by saying, at no point in this game will we care what the actual rules or like classes or anything in actual 80s D&D were like. You, like, there is no, like in my other game, I think some where I ran this before, someone was like, oh, I don't think they had tieflings in it. Like we don't give, we do not care what was actually in 80s D&D. Um, ah. What, who does Iris end up playing as? Um, she chooses like the warlock, so it's a character with like the dark, the dark, the, the miniature with the dark black hood and the you know, red and the red lining, and you know, like I guess you know, casts like you know, Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. <laughs> <Babe. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cool. Um, what's what's the warlock's name? Sorry, uh, I know that picking a name is like the hardest part of the character creation. No, I'm no, making no, everyone no, do it no. twice. Um, I I think um, her name is it, it. She goes with like Mordred Hellblaster. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's that's real. That's great. And she stole it from like this universe's like version of like you know. Uh, like imagine Michael Moorcock, and then like go down like literary <laughs> quality. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Um, and what's what's Dorian's character? Um, I think he plays like a paladin. Mm -hmm. but like uh, a like a little bit of a metal paladin so like he doesn't believe in like the good god or whatever he's like the what is the black guard or something like that yeah, more right. on, the, on the thing and he's he's just really into like hack and slash is all he wants his character mm -hmm. to do most of the time cool uh and what's his name or her name um um. Uh, I hate this part. <laughs> right, I'll come back to you. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll come give back, you a second. Um, Sam, what's your cleric's name? I think that uh, I I just love the idea that Kane got like the pre-made character out of the back <laughs> of the book. Uh huh. Because. Kane couldn't be bothered to actually like try and like pick anything, and so uh, what's what's the 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 person's name? I like um, Jesse is there, like trying to help me make a character. <laughs> like, yeah, what spells do you want? It's like I don't care, just pick something. He's like, okay, I'm gonna go with the the regular one because <laughs> I don't have the time for this. Um, and so it's got it's got to be something like um, like uh, Baldred, uh, like Baldred Great Hammer, and he's like some dwarf cleric for out of the back of the book. Super generic. Sorry, I didn't catch the name. What did you say? Baldred Great Hammer. Baldred. Yeah, Great that's Hammer. Right. yes. That does sound like the correct name. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> Right, I am going to come back to you now. Um, do we get a name for the paladin? I'm having trouble coming up with a first name, but I think it's going to be like... Uh, Graham. Uther. Uther's good. Uther. Uther... Uh, <clears throat> um, 
Uther the Destroyer. We'll just do <laughs> he's for a now. Paladin. He's a paladin. So but he's, he's like a bla- he's like a kind of like an evil paladin, I think. Oh, he's a blackguard. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, you, are you that player that always has us address you as Sir the Destroyer? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 We'll do that. Sir the Destroyer. <laughs> Well, in, um, second, in second edition D&D, our characters are supposed to aspire to owning their own keeps and lands. So eventually the land that he that his castle will be known will be Castle the Destroyer of the of the of the of the township of the Destroyer. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Um, so we have two more NPCs who will also need characters, Jesse and Michael. Does anyone have like a great concept for what their characters might be? Um, does anyone want to like jump in with what who they're playing as? Oh yeah, uh, let's make some other ranger, like a ranger called Shadowfoot or something. <laughs> all right, Jesse is definitely going to be Shadowfoot the ranger. Um, yeah. And. Kane, do you want to give Michael a character? Because I saw you unmuted yourself as well. Um, uh, I was going to say we we kind of need a wizard or a rogue. Yeah. Uh, I, I was I was thinking like the the ranger rogue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Works pretty well. Except with for that. the two more horrors. Yeah, there's lots of traps. I, I don't think you need to worry about like party balance <laughs> in this game of Monster Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just that like both times I played it, our rogue only made it like into the first hallway. So, um, yeah, we can go with the wizard though. Let's go with the wizard. So, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, and they're playing a a woman, so it's like Theodora, uh, Theodora von Sorensen. Um, can I just say that this D and D party has the greatest assortment of names of any D and D party, <laughs> like basically in history. The uh, Shadowfoot Theodora von Sorensen, uh, Mordred Hellblaster, Sir the Destroyer, and Baldric Greathammer. Um, absolutely incredible. So, uh, you eventually, like, you you know, it takes a while for you to get characters together or, you know, for Kane to kind of accept this character that is just torn from the back of the book in the end, uh, probably, you know, run off on the photocopier. Um, but, it, you know, it's definitely for Iris to make a character. Does Iris, like, enjoy the process or, like, how does Iris go with that? Is it weird and, fo- <laughs> weird and foreign or is everything just weird and foreign to her? It's weird. Like it takes a lot of concentration from her to make the character, and I think, like psychologically, that comes from a place of like not really believing that people are in control or can have control over over self expression and uh, and you know personal destiny. So just you know coming to grips with that, and that's why she's stealing from like literature. She's stealing from the spines of books that she's seen to make the character you know, come together. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, so once you have all your characters together, um, and I think it's been increasingly obvious that like Michael is annoyed by the intrusion <laughs> in particular. Um, all, well, I, I'm not sure how Dorian is, is coping with these interlopers uh, interfering with his normal kind of you know, he's normally the annoying one, and now there are these new interlopers who are annoying in their own ways. Um, but Michael is pretty visibly, like, not wanting these newcomers. Like, was pretty happy with the deal that, that they had going on before. Um, but eventually you all kind of settle down to play, uh, and Jennifer looks out over the DM screen, uh, and there's an almost... You almost detect a kind of weird uh, sparkling of her eye, as if some strange power had passed across her face. Ooh. And she looks down at the text hidden behind her DM screen, and she says, Somewhere under a lost and lonely hill of grim and foreboding aspect lies a labyrinthine crypt. It is filled with terrible traps and not a few strange and ferocious monsters 
to slay the unwary. It is filled with rich treasures, both precious and magical, but in addition to the aforementioned guardians, there is said to be a demi-lich who still wards his final haunt. Be warned that tales have it that this being, called a Sererak, possesses power that make him nearly undefeatable. And I think we'll take our second break here. Um, can and I, maybe, can oh, I yeah, jump in real quick? Please. As soon as she says a Sererak, I fall out of my chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is a great spot to, to cool. fall on. Um, yeah, so let's um, leave Kane on the floor and we'll come back about five minutes past the hour. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. All right. Um, everyone good to yeah. kick on? Yeah. Sweet. Um, yeah. So, Kane, like, what is it f- like you fell we, when we left, you had just fallen on the floor. Um, like, what did it feel like, or was there a particular, like, like what exactly happened for you? Um, mm, I think, I think what happened is it's just an agonizing scream inside of Kane's head that just like, just this anger and frustration that he doesn't know where it's coming from or what's going on. And... <clears throat> just fell backwards out of his chair. Okay. So Kane's never heard the name of Sarah before. Like it's nope. not something that Papazotl had ever raised in. Interesting. I really like the meta element that Kane worships a god who won't actually be invented in D&D like cosmology. Well, I think won't be invented in D&D cosmology until like the, the early 2010s or mid 2010s. Um, I'm not really sure. That's probably not true. He's probably from our D&D. I wouldn't have the faintest idea. Um, cool. So how do the rest of you react to Kane falling from his chair? Uh, I think Dorian kind of looks over at Kane and he's like, yeah, great. Way to come in here first day and just be an idiot and ruin the mood. Like, Jennifer puts time into this stuff. Uh, well, I think, you, chair. Like, I think you need to roll to shut someone down for that. <laughs> Iris kind of laughs, actually. <laughs> Sidori and roll with cold. <laughs> wow, so mark experience. Um and I think Jennifer will just kind of like bark at you, Dorian, like, you know, Dorian, like, can you not just play nice with our new, like, she really, like, almost out of character, sticks up for, for Kane or, or, like, defies you. Um, oh, hell no. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I think that makes Dorian pretty, pretty angry. Uh, and he just looks over at Jennifer and he's like, Jennifer, and like, I think like the group, like they're kind of, they've been doing this for a long time and they kind of all understand that he can kind of read their minds and thoughts a little bit sometimes. And they're not quite sure what the relationship is, but I think Dorian's just going to be like, look, I know none of you all want them here. So I don't know why you're trying to stick up for them. (laughs) And yeah, Kane has definitely like gotten to his feet at this point and just like pulls the chair back. Sorry. That's didn't didn't mean didn't mean that. Thank you. And he like looks at Jennifer and like is you you she can probably tell that he is legitimately thankful that she is sticking up for him. Cool. Um so Iris just kind of laughs and observes all this happening. Uh, you're muted. Yeah, I mean, uh, on the uh, on the moment that 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 sa- that Kane, you know, makes a plaf sound is when she dar- she chuckles. <laughs> yeah. So, like, 
my I, I haven't run the Tomb of Horrors or played it, but my understanding is that it's extremely boring at the start. That you spend basically your character spend quite a long time excavating a cliff, uh, digging in different spots, hoping to eventually unearth the actual opening. So we're just gonna uh, cut ahead a little bit. Um, you're you're probably not having a great time. Maybe Dorian is, is actually happy that no one's having a good time. Um, <laughs> but there's a long stretch of my character digs here. You know, it takes 10 minutes. Make make this check, make that check. You don't find it. Okay, I dig here. Um, you eventually find the false entrance. Um, you survive the false entrance and then you spend some more time digging 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 you eventually find the other false entrance but you know all this just goes on for ages um yeah. tedious but, laborious minutia <laughs> yes um eventually you, you you come to time to take a break like you dorian and and kane probably need a cigarette um a couple of the others probably smoke as well there's just a a, a quick break to pop outside um everyone smokes well, that's I mean, my question. Does it yeah, does uh, Iris? Um, you know, if, like if she, if Iris sees Dorian and 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 Kane, and I guess Jennifer, you said at least one of them. You know, she sort of like follows in, and she <clears throat> she asks, she sort of like wordlessly asks for a smoke from Jennifer. I think Jennifer probably doesn't smoke. Like she's probably like the one person who doesn't, but I think like when Dorian showed up, he like threw a, but like three or four packs of cigarettes like on the table or something. Um, okay. So you could, yeah. Yeah. Is that I a mean, microphone? I'm oh, fine if Jennifer smokes too. I just think that like if she's like the one doing, she might be like, a little bit more on the like. Yeah. I music. concur with your interpretation of only because it makes her a bit more of a uh, you know more uptight. <laughs> it makes, yeah, it makes Jennifer more uptight. So I think maybe Michael I'll, I'll, is who I'll filter smoke from. Okay. Um, so like all of you, I see. Well, so you're going outside for a smoke. I think in the eighties, it was you would have had to go outside to smoke on school property. Um, at least um, there's not really staff or teachers around today, so you're not too worried about you know smoking in the school. Which, yeah, <laughs> which isn't normally allowed. Um, are you all going to smoke in like a group or are you going to, you know, separate yourselves and go off or like, what are you imagining? I do have a question. Is this Iris's first time smoking? Yes, it is. Well, I think you're going to need to roll to keep your cool on that one. Um, Absolutely. But I just want to like set the scene a bit before we get to the, the roll. Um, I think Iris like, okay, so just uh, as a rule, I think where I'm going with it is that Iris will always stay close to the group, but also far away enough to, like, you know, feign this sense of, like, distance, right? And so if they're standing, let's say, beh out behind the classroom or outside the building or whatever, she would be far enough to be on, like, one of those, what do you call those? Like, the little stops on the, on the, on the, in the parking area that keep your car from moving too far. Yeah, yeah like, 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 she'll sit on one of those things. Okay. You know, but there'll be black, yellow, and black lines, and smoke there with her back turned to the group, and you can All sort right. of like hear her faintly coughing because she don't fucking know how to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so, do do Dorian and Kane like form a group with the others, or is Kane? I mean, I imagine Dorian probably smokes with. So, what did we say? Like Jesse and Michael, like the three of you, presumably smoke together. Um, does Kane? Well, firstly, does Kane try and join that group, and then we'll find out whether Kane is allowed to join that group. No, no. Kane is the. I'm gonna go. I go outside. I go about two feet to the left and lean up against the wall right by the door and uh, just kind of watch this this click that he has not been invited to and probably never will be. Um, all right. Well, Iris, I would love for you to roll to keep your cool to see how you go with your first cigarette. Uh, so that's rolling with cold. Uh, so uh, name what you're afraid of. So I assume in this context you're afraid of, like, looking ridiculous or, or choking on the smoke or, you know, basically that sort of stuff. Um, and roll with cold. No. 
eight. Uh, so on a seven to nine, the MC will tell you how your actions would leave you vulnerable and you can choose to back down or go through with it. So like if you, you, you are going to start like coughing pretty hard on this cigarette. Um, and if you do that, then Jesse is going to come over to make sure you're all right and try and like talk to you um, in this moment of vulnerability. Um, do you want to do that? Or are you going to realise the cigarette is, is not for you and just let it burn down with your back to the group? Sorry, you're muted again. I need a shortcut for this, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Iris will... That sounds tempting, but I think Iris would, would would try to keep up the charade even more. Like just just double down on this, and you know, <laughs> not not let anyone know. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so how does it work? Um. So I mean, Jesse's just going to come over. You're you're going to have you're going to start coughing. Um. The and Dorian Jesse will like kind of look over at Iris and then just uh. You know, I say, oh, I'm going to go talk to her. She seems like, and then just start to walk away. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I think Dorian's more concerned about Kane at the moment. Um, <laughs> and uh, is going to have to go talk to Kane in a minute. Okay. So Jesse will uh, walk over to, to Iris and kind of crouch down next to you and ask if you're okay. And uh, Iris sort of just like says, sort of like side eyes, side eyes Jesse, and goes like, "No, of course I'm not okay," you know. And then insist on still like smoking the cigarette, <laughs> <laughs> just, still, just still forcing it. And it's like it's 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 you know hacking and coughing. And I think, in a way, Iris is sort of like enjoying the burning sensation in her lungs. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel just to feel alive. The yeah. um, <laughs> cigarettes just to feel alive. Yeah. Um, so Jesse will like give you some some pointers. Like, see, I'm not a smoker, so I don't know how this would go. But like, you no, know, try it, try and I, I think there's a thing that they say like, suck it, you know, take a deep breath, roll it through your, I don't know, oh, yeah. whatever. She gives you some helpful advice, um, yeah. and then she kind of awkwardly or a little nervously says. Um, so you had that fight with uh, Alex recently, um, the person that you threw out the second story window. Yeah. Um, what was that about? It wasn't a fight. If it was a fight, it wouldn't have been so easy to throw him off the building. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, I know Alex is an asshole sometimes, but, like, why? Do you mind me asking why? Um, he made fun of my, uh, he, he made fun of my shoes. <laughs> I think there's a shot where, where the camera cuts to your shoes and the two of you looking down at them. What are your yeah, shoes yeah. Oh, they're muddy. Like? They're muddy, like you know, because 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 Iris right. takes a long walk from from the from the woods to the school, so you know those things don't really like like she's not very she's not very careful or thoughtful about where she walks. Yeah, and that's why she's got Kate shoes. Yeah, so yeah. I think that they're like this look comes over Jesse's face. Where at first she was kind of trying to bond with you because she thought it was pretty cool that you threw this like dickhead guy out a window but now it just seems more like like <laughs> like dangerously unhealthy and unhinged <laughs> behavior and she uh like takes a beat and she's like oh your, your shoes right um what about them no i think great i just hey yeah i hate it when a guy makes fun of my shoes too um and do do I feel the like is is Jesse feeling scared or nervous in a way that would Dorian would notice? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a question for you, really. Like, how finely tuned is your your sense of their their feelings or their thoughts? Well, I mean, we probably hang out outside of D and D, and D and D alone is like four hours a Saturday of just us sitting in a room, and we've been doing it for like a couple of years. Yeah. So, um, probably quite a little, yeah, quite a bit. And I think Dorian's a little bit more annoyed than anything, but he he's going to walk over and see what's like freaking Jesse out. What's going on over here? Nothing. None of your business. Uh, sorry. Sorry. I didn't, I wasn't trying to butt in. I just thought, you know, see what's going on. We were talking about, and and Iris sort of just looks away. How you should roll better. <laughs> uh, I don't um, know. I don't know if it's necessary to, 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 to really. To, to, if if it, I don't know if we would have gone up the mountain, you know, that slowly, if you didn't keep watching, you know, those climb checks. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, you'll thank think, me for having big armor when we get inside. I think you definitely have to roll to shut someone down for you should roll better. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> harsh. <laughs> okay. I didn't even think about that mechanically. I was just... <laughs> All right. Uh, roll to shut someone down. Where is that? Okay, there we go. Um... That's a cold. All right. It's cold. I don't know why I'm doing my lame Sean Connery impression. Hmm. Uh, I'll just use it to stay cool roll, so because it's the same stat. It's a six. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic, given that you were dissing his rolling abilities. Um, <laughs> uh, but that is a miss. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Mark and XP and uh, Dorian, do you want to respond to that? Um, let's see. Um, look, I know everyone gets lucky on their first term playing time playing, but don't let it go to your head. You know, you got a couple lucky rolls, but you'll see what it's like. Um, and what's up with your shoes? <laughs> uh, Why? Are, did you? Never mind. And he's just gonna turn around and walk off. <laughs> um, cool. And I mean, Dorian, you mentioned also that you want to talk to Kane. Is this the moment where you do that? Uh, yeah. Um, but can I gaze into the abyss first? Oh, well, what are you doing to gaze into the abyss? Like, what does it look like? So my main, well, it's not my, like, I don't care that much, of course, but uh, Jennifer sticking up for Kane, like, really rubbed me the wrong way. And so I want to kind of just probe into her head and see what she's thinking right now before I walk over to Kane. And I think I just take a couple steps away from where they were, and look at Kane and then just kind of take a deep breath on my cigarette uh, and let the smoke kind of come in uh, and then as it blows out I kind of try to reach into her mind a little bit and see mm. what she's doing alright well yeah roll to guys into the abyss um, so this is is that with dark? I believe it is. Dark. Okay, this could go great because I have a negative one. Um, if you have a string on Jennifer, you could spend that here. Um, I think since you're you're essentially rolling a move on her. Mm, that gives me what a plus one. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll just take. Okay. I'll just take my chances yeah. right now. Oh, a seven. Seven. Right. 
So on a seven to nine, the abyss shows you confusing and alarming visions, but you get your answer nonetheless. Um, so I think that like ordinarily you would expect to like, you know, you've been able to do this before. Like you've been able to reach into their heads, get a clearer understanding of what they're thinking. Like it's, it's fairly routine for you, but this time as you reach into what should be like the space of Jennifer's thoughts, you see a grinning green devil face with an enormous black void where its mouth should be. So good. What do uh, you do? Uh, I think that like uh, shake my head real hard. Like, uh, don't like that at all. Um, and um, uh, that like freaks me out even more. So I think. I try it again on Michael just to see like what <laughs> like what like what's going on. Okay. Um Michael, so I'm not gonna get you to roll for this. Yeah, Michael yeah, is just like not, you access his head in the normal way, like he's having like he's probably having these slightly misanthropic, like gatekeepy thoughts about how annoying it is teaching new people to play D and D. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh Okay, so yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like that at all. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go over and talk to Kane. Okay. Um, Kane, you see Dorian approaching. Do you and, react? Yeah, Kane's pretty frustrated. Uh, he's both trying to process what's like the whole screaming match that happened earlier. Uh, as well as the uh, not trying to look like he's too mad at Dorian for uh, calling him out. Uh, so, uh, Kane, how's that? Uh, how you liking uh, being? Uh, wait, which one? What was your character's name? Kane is Baldrick uh, Great Hammer. Baldrick Great Hammer. <laughs> so, how you like him being Great Hammer? It's fine, I guess. The I haven't really done much. I don't really get this game. This this game. You guys all seem to just kind of know what you're doing, and we've been doing it for a while, but. Uh... Schneider wouldn't tell me why uh, why he was sending you over here. So what do you what do you do? Why'd you get Wait. stuck with us? Chuckles a little bit. Uh, what do you mean? What did I do? What does anybody do? I didn't do anything. It's the point. The point. Like what? You, you like pull a fire alarm or something? No. They they keep telling me to do stuff and I just don't do it. Oh, so what? You, it. Like not going to class and stuff? That dumb stuff? I I, I feel like. Uh, Dorian has like I think we have classes together because I I liked the idea that you floated earlier of I'm also a senior and like I'm skipping I'm kind of going through it to avoid graduating and so if you're a senior we probably would have classes together and I just like don't show up most of the times like yeah like so what you don't graduate like I don't see that would bother why that would bother anybody in your family. <laughs> Do you want to roll to shut someone down there? Like I, I like I just don't understand. Like you're gonna show up to this, but you're not gonna go to like math, like calculus, like like what, like what? What's Schneider thinking? Like this is just like there aren't adults here telling me what to do. Oh, see, it's like an authority thing. Okay, 
fine here. I, I if, guess I get, I, if I get tired of you guys, I can, I don't know, put up my cigarette butt on my car on this piece of paper and leave. You guys aren't gonna. Yeah, I wouldn't hurt anybody here's feelings. Yeah. See, you get it. Yeah. Anyway, takes another pull from the cigarette. Torian just turns around and walks back inside. <laughs> Um, so the, the break, um, finishes up, you go back, you get to play for a few more hours. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't really want to narrate, uh, three hours of Tomb of Horrors. Um, but I'd love for each of you to tell me like one either like cool or humiliating or otherwise notable moment that your character has in this game. Um, there's no expectation that it's something that could really happen in the Tomb of Horrors module. Like any tropey D and D thing is fine, but just like, yeah, a, a, a thing of note that happens or that your character does during the game. Um, Dorian, do you want to lead off? Yeah, I think the 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 game is just like not going his way, and um, like by the time they get down the first quarter, he's just like uh, sick of like the monkey business of the whole party, and so he decides he's like, all right, you guys all go through that door. I'm gonna call crawl through this uh, green <laughs> here, and I will uh, see you guys on the other side. Which is a sphere of annihilation. So, yes. well, what does Dorian think when Jennifer narrates the grinning green like devil that that her description of matches exactly the strange vision that he had when he tried to reach her mind before? Uh, so that 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 kind of freaks him out, and so he's like, "That's kind of why he does it." He's like, "I'm going to see what's in this green devil." and see if there's something here. And he's like, kind of like keeping an eye on like her feelings and emotions, like while he puts his character in there and sees kind of like what, what happens. <laughs> he wants to get like a read on if like this triggers anything with her. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem to, not that you can, can observe. Cool. Um, Iris, what about you? Um, I think, what happens for Iris is that she um, sort of like manages to convince Jennifer um, to what do you, what do you, you know that act of bargaining that sometimes occurs between players and GMs, right? And I think like I think Iris and 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 uh, Jennifer kind of hit it off in that way, in the sense that she's able to finagle like an interpretation of the magic to like get something, you know, get something clever out of the, out of the, out of one of the traps or the, or the chambers of the tomb of horrors. So yeah, like maybe some combination of, I don't know, mage hand, prestidigitation or whatever. So but Iris is a rules lawyer. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah. And, and it, or not just a rules lawyer, but sort of like, someone who accommodates if it makes sense within the fiction, but of course it has to be grounded in the rules. And I think the way this plays out is it's laborious. It's very like, all right, everybody's just got their thumbs up their butts, just waiting for us to like, you know, do this. And it also is like, I would assume very much taxes the patience of Doria. And you're just like, Ugh. Yeah. Well, I, my like, character's dead too. So I'm just like sitting around like waiting for this, crap to be over for the day like, I'm exactly so exactly you don't have a character to play and you have to listen to this crap <laughs> so there you go yeah um and kane what's your big moment i think kane is really not engaging with the rules that much um but i think there is a moment where uh i think it's at the like when everybody's still like digging around looking for this entrance and maybe we've found the first uh, false entrance and people are like discussing what to do next. And Kane just like 
uh, fine, guys, it's right there. And <laughs> everybody just looks at him like, this is the first thing you've said. And it is exactly where the thing is. I don't know how I know that. Jennifer's looking at me like, how did you know that? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I, I, I don't know. It's there. Like you point, to ran- you point to a random spot in the map and it's like, how do you know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Michael is like, wow, if you're that good at spotting space secret doors, you really should have played a rogue. Um, <laughs> Uh, what yeah. what what is that? Is that is that a type of makeup? I, I don't. I... <laughs> Michael's excitement just like collapses when you you're not into like when you're not interested. In it. Ah, um, but yeah. So the the after the the morning rounds out. Um, you run through a good chunk of the module. Um, I think uh, what was it? Sir, the destroyer is the only casualty. Um, so far, but that's largely because there's just been so much like digging and exploring time and so little like adventuring time. Um, but uh, the d d club is happy to invite Iris and Kane back next week for more of the same. Um, like is there anything that any of you want to want to do as you or before you leave um, the the group? Um, or otherwise, oh, sorry. I think I want to stay after and talk to Jennifer. Okay. Um, Um, I want to engage some mechanics here. What I, I think there's something in the way that Kane, like, gets up and leaves that's like the 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 bad boy <laughs> and i want to turn jennifer on so like can we describe that a little more maybe like the camera movements or like what is it about like is it just his his walk or like i think what? i think i think it's the like i look like as I'm as I'm like putting everything back, it's the the almost like the slow mo. I'm I'm putting the cigarette in my mouth as I'm walking out the door, and I look back, and it's the side view with the hair off to the side and the bright purple eyes. Oh yeah! All right, let's let's roll with uh, with hot. Yeah, uh, I'm glad that someone is rolling. Turn someone on. I would have felt a failure as a Monster Hearts moder- keeper. What is it? Yeah. I feel like it's necessary once a session at least. Yeah. <laughs> an eight. An eight. All right. So let me see. On an eight, um, they can either give you a string or choose one of the reactions. Um, and the reactions are to give herself to you, to promise something she thinks you want, or to get embarrassed and act awkward. So I think that what makes sense, because you are like walking away, it's not really like in the moment that she can choose those other things. So I think that there is like this, this like tangible like thing that passes between the two of you and you gain a string on her. Um, you feel this like emotional like connection or, or kind of power that you gain over her. Uh, and I think Dorian observes this as well. Like, Dorian can see it happen. I can feel uh, it happen. Yes. Um, but yeah, she she doesn't like stop you or anything. She she lets you leave. Um, Iris, you probably also see this happen. Like, I think the whole D and D club is aware. Maybe. Um, do you? What do you do as you? Is there anything that you're wanting to do as you leave, or or you want to stick around or anything? Um. Um, as I was saying in the chat, like I won't lie, I had been thinking of doing the same thing as Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm more, but I'm more than happy that he's answered. <laughs> I'm more than happy that he's that he's answered the call. <laughs> <laughs> the call to, to, to ensure that every session of Monster Hearts has to turn someone on roll. <laughs> um, well, uh, I mean, nothing like. I mean, one of the princi- one of the MC principles is to create triangles or whatever. So it's it, it certainly works for me if you decide you want to try and turn Jen on as well. Mm-mm. You know what? 
I got Ball something train. more interesting. I get, I got something more interesting, which is okay, that, that's right. Um, is as I'm sort of like, I like to think that everything is like an inter, not a, a montage, but sort of like an intercutting series of camera angles. So when we see Kane walk away and sort of like turn Jennifer on, that camera sort of like crosses paths with, uh, with 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 Dorian. And then we sort of flip over to his vision, and what I want to do is turn Dorian on. <laughs> so, what are you doing to turn Dorian on? Um, I think I sort of like register the look on Dorian's face when he sees uh, Sam interact with Jennifer, right? And that's when I sort of like look at him and give him a sort of like smoky look, and mm-hmm. sort of like you know like pull the jacket over and without consciously doing it sort of like, you know, the purse slips, the sort of like, you know, Oh, I see, I see your, I see your suffering. <clears throat> That's what I do. I see your suffering or like your, your, your angst or whatever. Anger, emotion, yeah. Or, yeah. Or anger or whatever emotion. Jealousy ride, her, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jealousy or whatever emotion ride chooses to define for Dorian. And then I sort of like, relish in it and enjoy it so like sort of like smile to it and i think that sense of like schadenfreude <laughs> like you know what i mean is, is is like that being able to see dorian suffer is what turns dorian on that or at least that's what i'm trying to trying to do <laughs> well we'll see if it works yeah i talk a big game but let's see what the role <laughs> says am i right <laughs> um so you do have the option to spend a string to add one to your role Yes, um, do it. Right. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, right. character keeper, we're rolling with hot. Hot mm-hmm. is at a plus one. Do I have strings on Dorian? I have a string on Dorian, so let's roll plus two. Whew. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Here we go. Nine. Yes. <laughs> um. So Dorian can either give you a string or choose one of the reactions. Um, so what does Dorian do? Um, so I'm going to... Do you use the, I promise something I think you want. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think maybe Dorian just misinterprets this. Hmm. And he sees your glances coming across and he knows that you threw, I think it was Aaron or Ax, ax, Alex. Alex, thank you. Off of the roof. Uh, and so he smiles at you like um, like a conspirator of someone who uh, also wants to do violence to another person. And so what he thinks you want is like the understanding that uh, – yeah, like he knows how you feel. That mm-hmm. like like he wants to hurt Kane right now and he thinks that you wanted to hurt Alex. And so he wants to give you that connection. Ah. That you're both vi- that you both have like an underlying violence and that uh, he doesn't okay. think it's wrong. I like it. <laughs> Like, how does Iris feel about that? Because it's not what she wanted, but maybe that sort of connection is something that she wants. It's not what she wanted, definitely, but it's definitely, but it's sort of like that's that. It's something she relishes in, in 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 feeling a little bit understood, especially mm-hmm. if that kind of understanding is rooted in the darker instincts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amazing. Um. And then Desirous leave? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and Dorian, you said you wanted to talk to Jennifer. 
you still want to talk to her after she got, you know, gooey-eyed at Kane? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. So she's, like, packing things away. Um, she looks up at you and smiles as you come over. Yeah, I actually don't come over. I just wait until okay. everybody else leaves, and I'm just, like, leaning on, sitting on, the t- like, the edge of the table, just, like, watching her. She, she, you know, she glances up at some point. She's like, oh, hey, Dorian, what's up? You know, and don't take this the wrong way, Jen. Like, you know, I love your games. You've been doing a great job. But today was just like, it's probably like because we had new people here and they don't really get it. But I don't know. The game was just off today. I, it just took us so long to get in and do anything. It was kind of weird. Like, usually you, you make it, like, so much. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. It just. Anyway, everything cool with you? So I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to shut her down. Yeah, I was like, going to say, as a, as, a, as a GM, it was one of the harsher shutdowns I've, I've seen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really cool. feel for Jennifer, but please yeah. roll. Okay. Uh, this is cold, right? Uh, yep. You, you can spend uh, a string again if you want. Yeah, I'm going to do that this time. Um, a nine. Okay. Um, oh, so she gets to give you a condition, but you also get to choose from the list. Um, I think I'll take another string on her, right? Because she doesn't have one on me, does she? No. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just keep this string on her. I think. Um, All right. For now, I guess so, it's kind of boring, but um, no, that's cool. I want I want something to push her with again later. Sure. Um. So I think that what she says she says something back to you like. You know, she she kind of bristles visibly. Like, she is... You see that she is hurt by what you're saying, like these words that are calculated to hurt. But she eventually looks up from her... from the books that she's packing away, looks you right in the eye and say, well, it is a game of player skill. And she's going to give you the condition bad at D&D. Oh! <laughs> oh. Um, uh, Dorian's just going to be like, whatever, and walk out the door, I think, and right. guess what he has to do. So I think that's where we're going to finish up for this week, because it's nearly nearly time. Um, so I'd love to just do a quick round of stars and wishes, um, which I expect everyone's familiar with. Um, so I'll just go around the order that you're on my screen. Um, Rai, do you want to lead off with a star and a wish? All right. Um, star to Kane for falling out of his chair and getting this all all rolling. That was that was beautiful. <laughs> and um, star to you, Shane, for uh, throwing uh, this together with the Tomb of Horrors and uh, bringing in some of the motifs from it that I remember that are great. Um, that. I forgot. I had totally forgotten about the fake entrance and the second fake entrance. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I remember, the pen is still real. Um, um, the inspiration for this game was actually when I was listening to, do you know, like, Fear of a Black Dragon podcast? Yeah, yeah. They did Tomb of Horrors, and they just read out a list of the, like, locations on the map. And they're so funny. Like, <laughs> false entrance, other false entrance. Like, <laughs> just like, oh, I want to run this. <laughs> using like what game system could I use to run this? What if I ran it in Monster Hearts? Yes. The, uh... False entrance three electric boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh Matthew uh f- with uh Iris uh doubling down on smoking a cigarette uh <laughs> just to get in because that's a real T 
teenage thing to do. Uh, you're coughing and you just keep going. <laughs> um, for wishes, uh, I would like to um, figure out what this hive mind thing is for my character. Um, but, but in the context of kind of the larger uh, whatever's going on with this crazy demon thing <laughs> that Kane has going on, like, uh -huh. um, like, how does this, like, what is the kind of metaphysical world that we're we're working in, kind of thing? So dive into some more of that weird stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and Sam, uh, stars and wish wishes. Yeah. Uh, that was that was great. I'm still cackling at uh, bad at D and D. Um, there are so many just little little hobby things that Shane you pulled in uh, that was just perfect. So big stars for that. Um, I I love this this like click that Dorian created. I love that I the pulling the queen in and creating this like cult D and D group is perfect. Um, and uh, uh, Matthew, the, the, the strange girl that lives in the woods is <laughs> such a fun character. And I can't wait to play with that. That's going to be so much fun. Um, uh, wishes. Um, I want excuses to give my dark power strings. Uh, I, I want to use I, I want to use these bargains, uh, and so the more situations that I can get into to to start using these bargains, the better. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's great, and Matthew. Um, yeah, uh, I want to say, like you know, for, um, in general. <clears throat> this is a really wonderful first session. I think at its essence, it, you know, it's kind of like, it effectively is like, you know, you all meet in a tavern kind of situation, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and people in the, in, the, in the hobby scene just love to make fun of how how dry and how exhaust and, you know, tedious that sounds. But this was a really delicious spin on it because, you know, it's got all that, you know, that, that John Hughes teen drama and it's got all that you know, all this dark energy and I'm really, really, you know, loving, you know, how, you know, dark and sexy it is. I'm just going to, I'm probably going to spend the rest of the week, like, eating up, you know, uh, moral instruments or Riverdale or whatever, just to, like, <laughs> keep myself in the mood. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, At least you don't have to listen to Megadeth all week to get in character. <laughs> Uh, I, I said somewhere in the chat earlier that I think I like to think that Rye has, now has a notebook like Captain America in Civil War. Uh, sorry, Civil War in Winter Soldier, where it's like metal bands to listen to. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to create, create a Spotify playlist. For sure. <laughs> anyway, um, I echo the sentiments that other people shared about. I think I think uh, I have, I think we have to credit Rye for like really like I think giving. A lot of meat, social meat to the situation by developing the click, you know, like primo. And um, you know, I'm really enthusiastic for Kane. Um, I think that juxtaposition of sort of like, you know, my dark secret <laughs> and sort of like, you know, um, you know, sort of this this comical haplessness. Is very like you know exciting for me and for my wish. Uh, wait, sorry, and I forgot. Uh, no, and like what Rai said earlier, Sh Shane. Um, you know, you claim that you don't really, you're not really familiar with the D, D stuff, or and you're trying to like put all the disclaimer about accuracy to the million. <laughs> I think you, I think you, you ran what I call like the, the community or the, the television show version of D D, where it's like. Yeah. It's completely inaccurate, but it's like it's got the vibe of the social dynamics down <laughs> that. And so I'm having a blast. Uh, for my wishes, I just want to see all the, like, this kind of came up about in the end of the session, but like, I want to see all these dark triangles, like, really just like come to life. I can't wait. I can't wait for all the complicated, like, feelings and like jealousies to like really rise to the top. So that's what yeah. I'm looking forward to. <laughs> cool. 
Well, my star is definitely the names that everyone gave their D&D characters. That was the absolute highlight for me. Um, but more generally, like, I, I love these characters. I'm, I'm really excited about this game. I think it, I was really happy with how it went. And I'm very excited um, for next week and the weeks to follow. And hopefully we'll have a fourth player next week as well. Um, so thanks very much, everyone. Um, uh, I'll just end the recording.